The community of Wakapau is witnessing some long-awaited changes to its physical infrastructure. Natasha Smith recently visited the village and in this InfoHub Extended, we'll tell you about a newly completed bridge and some other projects that have been undertaken to link the various communities that make up Wakapau. The future of Guyana has never looked better. Our nation is on the cusp of a development program like never seen before. While Guyana is now emerging as an energy giant through the discovery of massive reserves of oil and natural gas, it is your government's intention that the huge benefits emerging from this will go where it matters most, to you, the people of this beloved country. There is a surge of confidence in the way Guyana is governed once again, and the level of investor interest is unprecedented. Guyana is poised to become the breadbasket of the region, and the pace at which this nation will grow through prudent fiscal management will be nothing short of impressive. But more than anything else will be the way every Guyanese, regardless of color, class, or creed, becomes a part of this historic period of national transformation, sharing in the wealth and well-being of it all as one Guyana. Wakapau, located in Region 2, is an indigenous community comprising several islands where residents have settled. These islands are surrounded by swamps and savannas. The daily commute here is done by boat, which traverse the Wakapau Creek and man-made trenches leading to homes. However, since the establishment of the community, persons have tried to bridge these islands. This is particularly important to access schools, the health facilities, and farmlands, among other places. A recently constructed bridge between Myri and Barada is just one link between two islands, but it will be of significant benefit to approximately 350 residents of that community. This bridge that I'm standing on was recently constructed by the Ministry of Public Infrastructure in the community of Wakapau Region 2. In the following report, you will hear from the Tushau and residents of this community of how this bridge will be of benefit to them. The new bridge is more than 100 meters long and cost $19 million. It will significantly benefit the community because this is the main carriageway for persons living here. Since I was growing up, I know this bridge here. But then it was just a farming ground and we used to walk on wrong wood coming right across. People would just, you know, look after it, cut the wrong woods and put them. And some years ago, which I can't remember the year, CIMAP came in and they gave us a very narrow bridge to fit in with. And we used that for years, something like 18 years. The first bridge built by the Social Impact Amelioration Program, CIMAP project, was an improvement. However, during the period when the water is high, it became submerged and dangerous, especially with the threat of electric eels in the water. The dilapidated state of the bridge caused several accidents and a number of persons suffered physical injuries as a result. Arlinda Richards was one of the unfortunate ones. She told DPI of how she fell one night while crossing the bridge. I suffered for three months. I had five children to send to, to secondary and three primary and it was not easy for me because I live here but you guys I don't have relative from my side just my husband but thank God for um, a mother sister Eileen Charles assisting me with my children during this time and I thank God for it and I thank God for this bridge because I know I tell them 28 years I live in the community and I See no development, but thank God today that they can see this bridge. After that unfortunate incident, residents banded together and decided to use social media as a means of highlighting their problem. Joyce Fredericks was one of those persons. We come together and he take us out and along with the help of God, the people pray about it and it gone up. And eventually now we hear that um, some people come in for see the walkway, the bridge, no? And so comes, we get to be bridge. And I'm so thankful. You know, when I walk this bridge, I raise my hand and give the Heavenly Father praises. The 
new $19 million bridge is equipped with steel rails and solar lights, and several residents from the community gained employment from the construction of the bridge. Residents have welcomed the new infrastructure and are grateful that the government has been proactive in addressing their problem. It, 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 it will really be a benefit for us, right, because... I know the, the, the bridge is a really a, a nice gateway from this Baroda end to Myri. Mm -hmm. And for my part is that I do farm actually about two miles from here over there. And it, it will really facilitate me, right, to go and do my farm work. And it's real comfortable. All right, and then the handrails. Then for the school children, it's real comfortable because we have a lot of school children, you know, crossing here. So, And Myri now is the only point where the boat can land because over here there is no way for a boat to really land on us. So we, this is our main transportation. Moving on this bridge, I see it's a miracle from God. I really thankful. I am thankful. Yes. I don't know how much more to thank whosoever built this bridge and thank all of you. So today here we are standing on the bridge and we want to say thanks to the, to the government for really um, acting and being proactive in, in, in funding this bridge. I understand the cost is like um, $19 million, so I'm very, very grateful. This bridge will really help our residents because in this area between Boroda and um, Myri, we have 348 um, residents that live here. In another section of the Wakapau community, another bridge was also constructed, this time joining Corimero and Kamandang Koro. Tushaw Harman Cornelius explains. Well, this bridge here where we are, where we're standing now, connects Corimero to um, Kamandang Koro. And as you would have noticed, we, the road where we came from, it from Corimero, and it connects also right away wrong in the forest to Koraya. So this part here, is, is a vital link and as we're standing on this bridge here it's it was in such a bad state that from the three million uh, capital grant that we we received as a council we were forced actually to divert part of that funding to this bridge and um, since we have vehicle um, traverse in this area and children who used to use this road it was in such a bad state that whenever the rain falls the the road is actually flooded so children with nursery kids are um, very young, so they have to wade in water probably up to knee deep. And so we consider it very much important. Resident Dennis Fredericks has lived in the area for many years and longs to see the transformation of the crossing. Um, since I knew this bridge building, before I started walking here, when we had a wooden bridge, right? Well, at that time, it wasn't like this, like the road was a wooden bridge right across, right? We finished that and then we continued with another wooden bridge. But you know, a wooden bridge now might not last the amount of time, right? And more and more, the population grows and the children go into Mabel Sandy School, right? They usually use this every day. During the high water, it's not too nice. You still get water from the sun going back to the side, from this side going back, so you still get water in the place, right? Mm -hmm. So it's still not complete as that how the people want it. Uh, maybe the, the bridge is okay, but the, the, the road itself is not good enough. Okay. Yeah, and then um, we're hoping that um, if you could get assistance, that we could do a better job. Whereby, as I look at it, we need to walk along there, dig a trench right through, and if possible, we can pull both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Both sides and build it more higher. Another link not too far away that connects the communities of Myri and Waipakwa is a road built mainly by volunteers who fetch sand manually to build a stretch of road. This road connects the islands of Myri, Yarashima, and Waipakwa. It is built across a swamp and provides access to the school, health center, and church. Now residents are calling on central government for help for an upgrade to the road. It has been more than five years since the road was built and now is in need of an upgrade. Resident of Waipakwa, Joseph Boyan, was the first person to cut a path through the swamp to Myri. 
This was done to shorten the distance. When I came here the first time, the only way to go there, avoiding the creek to reach there, which was a longer distance to the church, I chose to cut this track here. It was just a track through the swamp. If you look on the both sides of the road, there is water. And I was happy presently now where I'm standing, where we, a road is now being built. Boyan is calling on the relevant authorities to assist with the upgrade of the road. There was a lady by the name of Miss Leslie who were here. She was a volunteer and she came here and she was a person who used to travel on the same, in fact, she used to walk on the same track that I built on the logs and so forth. And she came up with the idea of this road with the help of other agency came and this is what we have here. These infrastructural upgrades in the community of Wakapau are crucial to the provision and access of services such as health, education, security, business, to name a few, and demonstrates the coalition government's commitment to continue bridging the gaps between the riverine, hinterland and coastland communities so that all Guyanese can work to improving their lives and their development of their communities. This has been InfoHub Extended. Thanks for watching. Do join us again. Goodbye.